They seeded the business to trucks. The trucking era begins roughly 1968-1970. All the cattle come into the Flint Hills on trucks, all the cattle leave on trucks. About this same time, there's a switch from aged Texas steers, um, usually two-year-olds, some a little older, to yearlings. So we go from trains to trucks, from two-year-olds, three-year-olds to yearlings, and we go from single stocking to double stocking. Those big steers would be given five, six acres of each of Flint Hills pasture for a pasture season that began in the middle of April and ended in the middle of October. Six month pasture season, they give those steers um, five, six acres each. When they switch to yearlings, they give those yearlings three acres each. They're not as big, they don't need as much grass. And uh, for that, if they keep them six months, they give them three acres. But I mentioned Wayne Rogler had begun thinking about this 20 years earlier, but by 1970, the early 70s, they had gone over to double stocking. Intensive early grazing, it's sometimes called. There's probably another name or two for it as well. But the essence of it is, instead of two-year-old steers, big old Texas steers, and those steers were big. They're big as tall as a horse, some of them. And um, they would come in 45 on a railroad stock car. They'd leave 25. They'd gain that much weight. Now, the st these yearlings are coming in uh, 80, 90 to a pot belly truck, uh, four, one, two, three level semi truck, upper, lower, and some front and back mid-levels. Uh, and in double stocking, instead of giving the, the yearling six months, you give them three months. But instead of putting, say, uh, 500 on this pasture for six months, you put 1,000 on for three months. You double the stocking rate. It begins middle, late April, and lasts for 90 days. This is a time when we traditionally get the most rain from April through um, July. We get the most rain. It's a time period when the grass is growing the, the fastest. It's a time period when the grass has the most nutrition in it. After late July, that energy from the sun that has gone into the leaves of the grass starts going into the roots of the grass. And in the wintertime, if you want to run your cows on nothing but grass, they're going to lose weight and maybe starve to death over the winter unless you feed them hay or some protein pellets. Because blue stem, which is the best grass in the world for putting weight on cattle in that early part of this season, in the middle of the winter, it doesn't have much power left at all. In the early part, however, it has got a bunch of four major grasses, switchgrass, Indian grass, little blue stem, big blue stem. In that early part of the pasture season, this grass is packed with protein. And not only that, because the Flint Hills, the major rock in the Flint Hills is not Flint. There's shale under there, but the major rock is limestone. Limestone soluble. Those roots will go down 12, 15 feet. They pick up that um, limestone, soluble limestone, and it transfers in the leaf as uh, calcium. Calcium grows bones. Yearling cattle don't have their full growth yet, do they? Uh, those three, four-year-old steers from Texas, they were fully grown. They were skinny as anything, but they were fully grown. But these yearlings, they're still growing. They're still getting bigger bones. The bigger the skeletal structure, the more meat you can pack on it, right? So the cattle are getting bigger bones and they're packing on this protein-rich grass, uh, they're putting on pounds. And this, this uh, Flint Hills can put weight on cattle, stalker cattle, amazingly quickly. 
It's rare if your cattle don't gain at least two pounds a day eating nothing but grass. Most of them will gain closer to three pounds a day, and I've helped ship cattle that gain 3.8 pounds a day. I've heard of some that gain four, I've not been in on that, but I've helped ship cattle have gained 3.3, 3.6, 3.8 pounds a day. Think of that, gaining almost four pounds a day and all they're eating is native grass. And what do you have to do to this grass to make it good? Don't overgraze it, burn it, keep the trees out, 